First, one that I just don't, I don't know the answer to, but I ought to, and I haven't heard it mentioned today, when you were talking with Mr. Ruiz, Dr. Ruiz, earlier, and you were talking about post uh, uh, placement services and that kind of thing, one of the questions that, that entered in my mind earlier with other questions and with Dr. Ruiz is, are, is ORR notifying the local Department of Social Services that a child has been placed in their area. And the reason I ask that is, is that we see these reports where the kids aren't being educated, they're not in school, they're having to work these long hours. A lot of times your Department of Social Services will check up on a kid to see, well, okay, we know that, you know, little Johnny arrived here. How come they didn't enter into the West Salem Elementary School? Why aren't they in the middle school? And they, they can follow up on that. Are we doing that? Are we notifying them? Uh, Chairman Griffith, I don't know the answer to that question, if ORR is notifying um, local officials. Can you find out for me? I, I, I will right. look into that, yes. You can look into that, and I'll look into that further as well. Also, I think there may have been a, some misunderstanding. When you were talking to Ms. Kamek, you indicated on, on Wuhan uh, Institute of Virology that you had recommended to NIH disbarment or debarment. That they consider. Right, but don't you have the authority to go directly to HHS's um, money folks and, and recommend to them, as opposed to going through NIH, go straight to HHS and say, we recommend they be debarred? We make referrals to the office that handles suspension and debarment. Um, in fact, we did a report on that. And, and did, you, did you send uh, Wuhan up to them as well as besides making a recommendation to, did you make a referral to HHS as well as a recommendation to NIH? I don't believe so. All right. And so the question that co then comes to me is, have you done that with EcoHealth Alliance? We, in our report, we do not recommend suspension uh, and debarment for okay. EcoHealth. Okay. So I got to ask why. Because we know that EcoHealth was delayed on year five. We know that in year four, they delayed reporting in year four excessive virus growth on their progress report to the NIH. They violated their contract because they didn't get the information from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And look, if it, it, we will never know now. Because we didn't get those reports, we will never know what they were doing at that point in history and whether or not something bad was about to happen in the, inside the lab. And whether you're a believer that it was a lab leak that caused COVID-19 or whether you think it was an animal, that information would be critical in a virus that killed millions of people around the world to have. EcoHealth Alliance violated their contract. They were negligent. They were sloppy. And they didn't do their job. Why in the world wouldn't we debar them? Our report does not recommend suspension and debarment. Why? It's With all of these violations, not just... They just didn't do one. They did two or three things that I consider major violations of their contract. So why aren't we, why aren't we debarring them? Our auditors that did this work have to adhere to yellow book standards, professional standards. Their analysis did not, in their view, warrant a recommendation. Are they lawyers or scientists, or do you have a combination? <laughs> they are auditors, and our work is reviewed by attorneys. Okay. Well, I just got to tell you, I see this kind of a breach as an attorney. I see this kind of a breach. I ain't doing business with those people anymore. And it drives me crazy that we're spending the American taxpayer dollars with a company. We're currently spending money with a company that negligently handled the records related to coronaviruses being done, research being done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And it's a, a plausible theory. I think it's uh, clear and convincing evidence that it came out of the lab. I think it was an accident. But others may have different opinions. It doesn't matter. Either way, if we had that information, we'd have the ability to make a better decision on where this virus came from that killed millions of people in the world. And I don't understand why we're spending American taxpayer dollars supporting a company with that kind of a record. I yield back. Chairman, can I? Yes, ma'am. I'll give you a minute. I went on a little tirade there. I'll give you a minute to answer. Okay. We, uh, the report uh, uh, points out a number of issues that the department itself could take action and suspend and debar EcoHealth Alliance. We don't, we don't say they shouldn't uh, suspend and debarment. 
We have another report that talks about uh, the suspension and debarment program that was released a couple of years ago, and we found a number of opportunities. Uh, the majority of referrals come from us uh, for suspension and debarment. We don't see referrals from CDC, from NIH, <coughs> from ACF, from CMS, other grant-making contractor giving officials, and we note that in our report. The department could uh, make a referral to that entity to look at whether or not they could be uh, suspended and debarred. And we do point out in that separate body of work that there are more opportunities. We shouldn't be the only ones recommending suspension. And so you think we should expand the ability to make those recommendations? And do you think that we should have the ability for HHS to fine bad actors, to have a monetary penalty when they don't submit the reports that they're supposed to submit in a timely manner, particularly when you're dealing with deadly substances, de de pathogens? Uh, our work does not have any findings on fines. We do note that 90,000. But you wouldn't be against them if we in Congress decided we wanted to do that. Ms. Castor, I went over my time. Do you want another minute? No. All right. Okay. Thank